Hi boys and girls, welcome back. Well, we have another story today about Jesus. Well, today our story takes place in Jerusalem by a pool, a pool that was called Bethesda. At times, the water had rapid movement and the people believed traditionally had been taught that an angel came down and stirred the water in the pool. Well, the people believed that if you stepped into the pool, it, you would be healed. That like it was like magic waters. Well, one afternoon when Jesus was in Jerusalem, I'm gonna turn you to the board. So you see the pool? All of these people need healing of some type. You see the people and here's the pool right here. Well, one afternoon when Jesus was in Jerusalem, he went down to the pool of Bethesda. Five covered porches had been built around the pool. Many sick people, people who were lame, that means they couldn't walk, boys and girls, blind and paralyzed, gathered there to wait for the movement of the water. There was one very sick man who had tried many times to get into the pool but he couldn't, the man couldn't walk. He just lay on his mat and he stared at the water. He wanted so much to enter the pool first and be healed. So boys and girls, they, they thought that if they were the first ones in the pool, they would be healed. Well, when Jesus saw this man lying on his mat, he knew that the man had been sick for a very long time and he desperately needed help. He had, been, he had been like this for 38 years, boys and girls. Well, Jesus walked over to this man and he said, Do you want to be well? Well, the sad man looked at Jesus and he, he did not know who Jesus was. And the man said, Sir, I have no one to help me into the water. When I try to reach the water, someone else gets in front of me. Then Jesus told him to do a surprising thing. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Well, he didn't expect this man that he didn't know to say, you need to get up and walk. And that's what Jesus pretty much told him. Rise up and take up your bed and walk. Well, Boys and girls, Miss Pam's going to change your boards and talk to you a few minutes about this. So this happened on a Sabbath. You remember the Sabbath? We talked about that before. That's their holy day, kind of like our Sunday, but it's not on Sundays. And so this is when this happened. Well, the people in the church thought that you shouldn't be healing people on the Sabbath because they had a lot of rules and regulations that they had, they had made. They were all man-made rules, but they were still rules because the people in the church back then were like leaders. They were like government almost. And whatever they said, those were the rules for everybody. And so this man listened to Jesus. Do you think he cared really what the rules were. He just wanted to be healed, right? Yeah, just like anybody that's sick in any kind of disease or problem wants to be healed. Well, the man hadn't walked for years, right? You remember that? 38 years, that's a long time. That's probably older or longer than some of your parents are old. So that's a very long time. He didn't ask any questions, so you know what he did? He jumped up. I'm going to show you the board again. Here they are. He hadn't walked and he jumped up. 
He immediately felt his muscles tighten and his legs straighten. He sprang to his feet and they were strong again. He was well. What joy filled his heart. As he picked up his bed, see he got his sleeping bag, his bed, <clears throat> wrapped it up. He was so excited finding himself well that he never noticed who had healed him. When he looked around to thank him, Jesus was gone. The man tucked his rug and blanket under his arm. It felt so good to walk again. Can you imagine, boys and girls, what that must have felt like to be standing on your legs? As he went along praising God for his healing, well, that's interesting, boys and girls. He praised God for his healing. That's something we need to remember to do. When God heals people we know or us, always remember to praise him. Always praise God. Well, he met some of the Pharisees while he was walking along. And they said, this is the Sabbath day. It's not right for you to be carrying your bed. <clears throat> That's one of the rules, boys and girls. On the Sabbath, remember I told you they had rules, that man-made rules? Well, they said you couldn't carry your bed on the Sabbath. The Jews believed it was wrong to carry anything on the Sabbath. Well, the man who made me well told me to take up my bed and walk, explained the man. Who said such a thing, the Pharisees demanded. Remember, these are the religious people in the temple that run the temple and the government, pretty much. Who said that? Well, because the man didn't know who Jesus was, he couldn't answer, could he? Well, later Jesus saw him at the temple and Jesus said, See, you are doing well now. Now just don't sin anymore. Because if you sin more, it might come back and it might be worse. So you always, if you turn from your sin, boys and girls and adults, you don't want to go back to it. Because sometimes it'll come back and it'll come back worse. The man, then the man told the Jews that Jesus had made him well. When the priest talked to Jesus about healing the sick man, Jesus replied, My father is constantly doing good. I'm following his example. Well, you know what, boys and girls? This made the priest even more furious. They were so angry, they would not accept Jesus was God's son. Remember I told you he didn't come in the package they thought he was going to come in. They thought he was going to be some type of wealthy, mighty warrior king. But he didn't come that way. He came as a poor man as a carpenter from the, uh, the bad side of town. Well, they were trying their best. Once they figured out who he was, they were all the more eager. They wanted to kill him, boys and girls, because he didn't represent the Messiah they thought should, he should. It was too bad they couldn't have rejoiced that this man had found healing and can you imagine how happy he was, boys and girls? After not being able to walk for so many years, he was healed by Jesus instantly. And that, how happy that must have made him feel. Well, boys and girls, this story just shows us that God can do anything. But you know what was different? From this man and all the other people, he believed when Jesus said, rise up. He didn't have anything else to lose. He couldn't walk. He couldn't take care of himself at this point. He couldn't get up and walk around. So he believed. And when he did, instantly mus his muscles got strong and he jumped up and walked. Maybe the other people laying around didn't have faith. We've talked about that before. Maybe they didn't have faith to believe that Jesus could heal them. Do you want to be like Jesus? 
Yeah. Do you want to look for ways to help other people? Well, God will make those ways. Just ask him. He'll show you. He'll show you how you can help other people. And you know what, boys and girls? Another thing we can learn from this story is, remember the, the man, his first comment to God or to Jesus was, I'm not fast enough to get into the pool. Somebody always beats me there. Well, God doesn't care if you're fast or slow. He'll take care of you. It didn't matter how swift, how fast this man was. That's called his grace is what takes care of us. And it's for the fast and it's for the slow. It's for everybody. God has grace for everybody. So let's just remember that too, that God just loves everybody. Everybody. But it's up the, to them to believe. And not everybody wants to believe in God. A lot of people have a hard time believing in God because they can't see him. Yeah. And if they can't see him, they don't think he's real. Even though the Bible tells us all about him and it's been documented or research has shown that he existed, they'd rather not believe because they can't see him, they can't feel him, they can't touch him. But he's real, boys and girls, and if you study his word and you determine to get to know him and have a relationship with him, he'll be real to you. And then you can show others how he can be real to them, just like Miss Pam's showing you. That's how it works, boys and girls. Yep. So that's our story for today. I hope you enjoyed that. It's another miracle. Jesus did all kinds of miracles. Yep. And this is just one more of how he heals a sick man. All right, let's have a word of prayer and I'll let you go. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this miracle of Jesus healing this sick man. And Lord, thank you, Father, that this man chose to believe and he was healed instantly. And thank you, Father, how... He told the, the men at the church, the religious people, he didn't know who had told him to be healed, but he, it happened. He told him, and he got up, and he jumped up, and he walked. And that it, it, it didn't matter to him about the rules and regulations of the religious people. He just knew that, he just knew that this man healed him. And so, Father, help us to realize that you do that for us, too. Father, there are not any rules or regulations that men make, but, God, we have to follow after your word, what the rules and regulations you make for us. Help us to follow those, Father. And, Lord, to know that if we truly love you, we will want to follow those rules. So, Father, just open our eyes to know what to, to study and to see and to say. And, Lord, help us to just show other people that what you have done for us, you can do for them. That you love us and that you love them, no matter what they've done. And, Lord, that you can heal them. Father, that your grace is not just for good people, it's for everybody if they choose to believe and follow after you. So, Father, once again, we just want to thank you for this story. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you so much for Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I'll be back next time. Miss Pam loves you. But God, he loves you so, so, so much, much, much more. Okay, you have a great day. Bye-bye.